Okay, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling, and today's topic is public goods. Public goods are goods that you don't expect the market to be able to supply in sufficient quantity, uh, so you need the government to supply them. And there are two uh, typical reasons for this. One is called non-excludability. That is, you can't stop me from benefiting even if I don't pay. So a classic example would be police protection. If there's if there's police protection in the area, that's going to provide a public good, even if I personally wouldn't pay for it. So um, there has to be some kind of collective payment mechanism, because individuals uh, wouldn't pay because you figure, well, I'm going to get the protection anyway. Uh, national defense is another classic example. Again, if we're being protected from foreign attack, uh, it doesn't matter whether I'm willing to pay for that or not, uh, I'm protected. So that's non-excludability. And the other characteristic of public goods is non-rivalrous, meaning if I consume some, it does not reduce what's available for you. And certainly you, could, you would think that's true of national defense. There's no sense in which just because I have national defense means you can't have it. Um, maybe with police protection there is a little bit um, <coughs> of it being rivalrous and that, you know, if the policeman's at helping me at my house, they can't help at your house. So maybe there's a little bit of rivalrous there, but a lot of a big component of it is not rivalrous. If 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 you think of police protection as keeping the bad guys off the streets, then keeping the bad guys off the streets is kind of good for both of us. It uh it's not like having the bad guys off the streets is only good for me and not good for you. So uh, we might want to try to draw a matrix, and I'm not sure I'll be able to fill in every category in the matrix. Um, but we'll have, we'll say excludable and non-excludable, and we'll have rivalrous, non-rivalrous. Okay, so a pure private good is excludable and rivalrous. So, you know, a hamburger. It's rivalrous in the sense that if I eat it, you can't. You have to get a different hamburger if you want to eat a hamburger. Uh, <coughs> it's excludable in the sense that I can. it's possible that if you don't pay we can have a rule that says if you don't pay, you don't get. Okay, non-excludable, non-rivalrous, so these are the private goods, pure private goods. And then over here, the opposite would be the public goods, and again we have the national defense. That is, um, <coughs> I that my having it doesn't reduce it for you. I have it, and you can, and you can too. And non-excludable means uh, can't make me pay for it. Once, I mean, you, you can tax me to make me pay for it, but that's why it's a public good. But you can't make me pay for it in the sense, in, in a sense of 
the only way I can get it is to voluntarily uh, buy some from a seller. Okay, so let's think of something that's excludable but not rivalrous. I think uh, a song that's recorded as an MP3 file Okay, so it, sorry, it's MP3 file. If somebody else, uh, so if you're listening to this song uh, <coughs> on an MP, as a recording MP3 file, I can listen to the same song. Doesn't detract from your ability to listen to it. Ideas are non-rivalrous. There's a famous uh, Thomas Jefferson saying that about you know the, the, to the effect that. Uh, your use of an idea doesn't uh, detract from my ability to use, it, use an idea. But we can make them excludable. Uh, we can set up uh, laws and technologies that keep you from listening to a, a song without paying for it. That is, you have to pay for it in order to listen to it. And we have things like patent laws that... Um, so I'll just put in... DRM, Digital Rights Management for songs, and then patent laws, or in general, inter intellectual property laws that keep you from using other people's ideas without their permission. Uh, <coughs> so uh, they are excludable, even though uh, they're not rivalrous. Something that's rivalrous but not excludable. That may be a little bit harder. Um, this may be stretching it, but maybe um, a congested road. And if I get on it, it's going to make it harder for you to travel but it's hard to keep me from getting on the road uh, or you know, it's hard to uh, yeah um, maybe yeah so it's hard to sort of make me pay for it um, you know with tow roads that's getting easier and easier but it certainly used to be without uh, that technology it was without like the easy pass type technology uh, it was pretty expensive to set up a system where you have to pay to use a road, particularly at a particular time, uh, which is what you'd want to do with a congested road. If it's not a congested road, then it's not rivalrous. I can use it, you can use it, we don't bother each other. So uh, with a congested road, to really uh, exclude someone at the right time, uh, so to exclude, you need some kind of time-based or situation-based pricing pricing mechanism and uh, with old-fashioned technology that's hard to implement with modern kinds of technology it might be something you could implement so again the public good falls in this quadrant and that's a good that is going to have to be su supplied by some collective entity. Um, you know, we usually think of government because government can force people to pay for things uh, through the tax mechanism, whereas uh, some other mechanisms for supplying public goods like you know, charities or clubs or um, just general fundraising, they, rely, they still rely on voluntary contributions and kind of shaming people into paying for them. But that's your public good. And then the pure private good is something because you can exclude people who don't pay from enjoying the good and because someone who has the good, who enjoys the good, uh, takes away someone else's ability to enjoy it, they're sort of the more naturally, uh, they normally more naturally fall in the private sector. So that's the definition of public goods and private goods.